Hello everyone and welcome back to Cyberpunk 2077. In the last session we came up into this joint in clouds. Uh, we've been speaking to a few people around here about what's going on with Evelyn. And now we need to speak to Woodman who is apparently head honcho around here. And uh, I distinctly am nervous about this because when we headed into this joint in our previous save file, uh, everything went to shit. So I'm very much hoping the same does not occur here. Uh, use technical ability. Hey. Love that. Love to use my technical ability. Is there anyone around here? Because <laughs> it, was, it was getting spotted in this area that screwed me. Hello. Wait, no clients allowed in here. No client. Close the door on your way out, would you? Oh, yeah. As you can see, I'm very busy. Oh yeah, you look it. <laughs> I'm looking for Evelyn Parker. Looking for a girl named Evelyn Parker. Got nobody working here by that name. But she used to. What happened to her? Probably did what all the dolls try to do. Found a unicorn to set her up for life. Ah, you could do better. Try Roxy over at Booth too. Same heart-shaped ass. <laughs> Behavioral chip will do the rest. Won't feel any difference. Uh, you look like a reasonable man. Let's make a deal. You look to me like a reasonable man. I think we can work something out. And you look to me like a psycho prick who's never been ghosted by his bow or bill before. But go on. I'm listening. You see only tiger claws. Got no idea who's behind them. You sit here in this dank hole you probably call your office and think you've got it made, don't you? Congrats! You read minds better than our own fucking AI. Someone get this gonk a job. Ever stop to think who's behind the tiger claw puppets you call your bosses? Girl I'm looking for is linked to Arasaka. Tiger Claw bosses have got their own bosses. In case you didn't know, you're just too small to see him. <laughs> oh, because you're such a big shot. Let's just say a certain member of the Arasaka clan wouldn't be pleased if he knew something bad happened to Evelyn and that you're the one responsible. All right, fine. I'll lay it on you straight. Oh, yeah? Girl you're looking for, Parker. Jane here. Tell me something I don't know. Like, where is she? Think you know how things work around here. But you don't know shit. Dolls aren't here to give you pleasure and satisfaction out of the goodness of their soul. They're workers. Their job's to generate profit. Evelyn stopped bringing in the profits? Evelyn stopped pulling profit. No denying that, sadly for her. I saw what she did to the client. She gets spiked or something? Whatever or whoever fried her circuits, it came from outside our subnet. They played their deck like a virtuoso. Her chip was fucking rot. Believe you me, we tried to fix it. Didn't even come close. Shit. Dolls often malfunction? They common? These kind of accidents? Ever use tech that never broke? Didn't think so. Behavioral chip splits you right down the middle. Some people plain lose their minds. And for everyone that does, there's a dozen in line to replace them. Crazy. Crazy. But I guess not so crazy when you think about what people sign up for in real life that's like, yeah, that's not good. <laughs> So, I guess it's fairly realistic. Get to the point. Is this you talking it out straight? What happened to Evelyn? Got an order from up high to recycle her. You killed her? No. I found a ripper doc who was willing to take a look. Yeah, he said he knew something or other. Why'd you do that? You took her to the ripper instead of following orders. It didn't take you for someone with balls. 
For oh, fuck's sake, I'm not running a slaughterhouse here. Only recycle as a last resort. And family always gets a call. If there is any. Think there are any daddies out there willing to change the diapers of a brain-dead little slut on the verge of cyberpsychosis? Probably not. Casting him out on the street ain't an option either. Can't risk tanking our crib. He is repulsive, but I want this to go smoothly without ending up in a firefight, so I'm gonna say better than a bullet to the brain. Well, anything's better than a bullet to the brain. <laughs> you know, that's what every doll says. I'm starting to like you. You looking for work by any chance? So you invested Eddie's in Evelyn? You invested your own eddies to help poor, unprofitable Evelyn. Please. <laughs> you got me. Ripper's the one who paid me. For a broken doll. People got all kinds of kinks. Trust me. I know. Considering where I work. Fingers is a real specimen, though. Got all the fetishes. Even the ones you've never heard of. I'm sure he found her a nice niche. <laughs> That's the name of the Ripper Doc? Fingers? Name and address. The Ripper. Name and address. Or what he's known as, at least. <laughs> Don't know a last name. Don't fuck with me. I'm not. Goes by Fingers. Clinic's in some godforsaken alley up on Jig Jig Street. Wanna find Evelyn? Look there. And don't come back here. Ever. You just told me you liked While me and offered me a job. Elevator. Quicker you're out of here, the better. <laughs> he goes from, I like you, do you want to work here? To get out of here and don't come back in a couple of lines. <laughs> All right, Dark mate. Fingers on Jig Jig Street. Sounds like a co ed's wet dream. Hmm. 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 Contact! <laughs> Go on, flick to the next one. I want to see... I'm, there, there are other ads on here, right? I don't think I have any way to control it. Moving to the next one. There we go. Hard driver. Oh, Christ. Okay. Okay. Beep boop. Well... That went significantly better than I was expecting. Holy shit, that was a quick. What the fuck? That was so quick. <laughs> this is like, comparing this, the fucking lift to get up to your apartment, that's absolutely ridiculous. I know you're only going down one floor, but it's literally from when you click the button, click one, two, three. That is, that is amazing. And I was probably counting the seconds a little too quickly or something. I don't know. But that was, yeah. Wow. <laughs> I'm impressed. I am impressed. Did we read this? Yeah, I feel like we read that, right? You may take your weapon. Nice. A pleasant day to you. The next time you have that urge for clouds, don't wait. How's this work? So how's this all work? An algorithm pilots the doll's motor functions. It takes your profile data and transforms into experiences in real time. Memory dampers on the doll's behavioral chip block any recall of the session. So there'll be no trace of the media. Did we listen to this before? Well, I could say yes, but I'm pretty sure we listened to that before. Good chat. Bye. Once you're in there, you set the stakes. You're saying it's not dangerous, but there's some risk involved. That is one way to put it. I like how he continues the conversation even though I'm way out here now. <laughs> Consider my interest peaked. Hold on. Got a real charm this place. In that slimy subterranean kind of way. See, dollhouses aren't your thing. See, your opinion about dollhouses hasn't changed. Oh, but it has. Before, I wouldn't have touched one with a 10-mile pole. Now I'm thinking a fire would really make this place shine. 
Think we'll find her there? I think Finger's got her. I think we'll find her there. V, if I could see that far, I wouldn't be a fucking ghost on a chip in a corpse's head right now. <laughs> so true. Cannot fault him there. Right. Uh, take the elevator. This is probably going to be a lot slower. Feels bad. Let's just check our inventory. Is all our shit? No, okay. I, I thought it might do this. It didn't replace our guns in our actual... Uh, in our hand. Okay, is there any pistol better than that pistol? No, it's all... It's all down arrows. Okay. Uh, next up was an assault rifle, right? Was it this one? 114 DPS. Uh, yes, because it's got the scope on it, so that must have been the one. And the third one was... Something. Submachine gun? I guess. We've also got a couple of blades now. 259 DPS. That's not bad. I have heard that blades can get really OP if you spec into them. Which is very tempting. <laughs> but we're, we're going to keep specking into hacking for the time being. But it is very tempting. To Apparently you're like, you're literally just one shot everything and you can like slow time and just go nuts with it all. Uh, right. I'm kind of sort of tempted to level these up to five each, but at the same time, I feel like we should just stick with our, our main thing, which is intelligence and technical ability to a slightly lesser extent. Although this is all about crafting, which I'm just not going to do. Like, I just... It's, it's not happening. But engineering... Uh, could be good. Potentially. Grenades dealing a bit more damage is good. Hmm. That's, like, amazing. But that requires level 20, so... <laughs> Uh... Man, is this entire thing, like, just about making tech weapons better? There Was was there some smart... Yeah, there's some smart weapon stuff over here. But it's mainly, like, all tech weapon stuff. So I think we can honestly probably leave technical at 7. We did just get into that door with our tech 7. I'm not sure how we would have got in there without that. But, uh... Yeah, let's just keep leveling up intelligence. That is where our main thing is. Uh, increases the breach time for breach protocol. Don't really care about that. Upgrades the data mine demon. That's kind of like... That's really good, but that's level 20. <laughs> I realize I'm not really talking over these much. Um, I really don't... Like, this is the big perk for Breach Protocol. And it's like, it's not even good. <laughs> Increases the breach time of Breach Protocol by 50%. Unless Breach Protocols get seriously, seriously more complicated later on. It's just irrelevant. Because the countdown doesn't start until you click something. So the actual time it takes... Unless it's literally going to go down to like five seconds at some point, is never relevant because you just figure out the path you're going to go prior to starting it. So I really don't understand the point of that one. Uh, hmm.
What about in here? Quick hacks dealing more damage would be good. That would be very nice. That's a better 21. Oh, I don't know, guys. I don't know. Quick hack spread distance has increased by two times. That's for, like, the ones that are... Uh, like, yeah, the, I'm trying to think of the right words for it. Like, they infect other people, and then, like, when they hit one person, they hit the next person kind of thing. I've heard those are good, and, like, this. Quick hacks that spread can jump to one additional target. That's probably pretty good to go towards, and then if we can get one of the quick hacks that, like, do infect people and, like, damage over time and stuff. Requires level 12 for that, so that's the next level away. So you know what? Let's uh, let's keep our perk points for now. One more level, we'll get that. We'll try and find ourselves something that spreads. Uh, and then a few more levels, we can also jump to that. And this one's out of three, so we can pop multiple points into that. That sounds like a plan. That sounds like a good plan. That is where we are going to take this build. That is where we're going to take this build. Okay, I'm pleased with that. Blue Moon, Red Menace, Purple Force, it's us, Crocs! After making waves in Tokyo, Sydney, and Paris, their next stop is on your doorstep. I really wish I could jump in lifts. I always jump in lifts. In every game, I jump in lifts. And you cannot jump in lifts in Cyberpunk, because it would probably bug the game out. <laughs> uh oh. <coughs> You had a plan, you tried, it fell flat. Now you're flat. Don't look in any condition to find help. Hmm. Yeah, I'm walking funny. This is not good. Ah, oh, fuck! What the hell is that? Relic malfunction detected. You hate to see it. No, no, damn it. What do you want from me? Jesus, what the fuck do you want from me? It's all going too slow. I'm gonna decommiss before we learn how to rip the chip out. You don't care if I live. Wanted me dead. Said so yourself. Made it pretty clear since that I changed my mind. Want you to live now. So what the hell do you want? Asked you already. What the hell you want from me? I got a get out of jail free card. I'd be a fucking fool not to take advantage. See, me and Arasaka, we got a half-century-old score neat settling, and I plan to do it. That's what I need you for. For some ideal, or to square a grudge? <laughs> but why? Fighting for some dated ideal? Pursuing a personal vendetta? You don't need to know. Here to get me from point A to point B. Listen, I know things. Where we can save your life, who can help us do that? You'll get rid of the chip. I'll smash Sokka. Win-win, kid. Soul Killer's what we need, and Makoshi's how we grab it. You're just a hallucination. You know you're just an irritating hallucination, right? Should just ignore you. And you're a walking corpse. Should just wait till your mind shrivels to nothing and frees up space for me. You fucking asshole. But it should be obvious. I've decided to help you. Need to find something first. Seven letters. Starts with an M. Mikoshi. What's that exactly? Okay, so... This Mikoshi, what is it exactly? Okay, basics. If you're jacked in, cruising the net, Arasaka can use Soul Killer, an AI, to trap, fry, and pack away your psyche, your mind, and your soul. Following so far? Yep, so what happened to you? Yeah, seen the memories. Did a real number on you. 
Okay, seems we've got a few more things to broach than I thought, but that'll come later. Anyway, when Soul Killer fries, roasts, and boils you, you die. But the contents of your mind get copied to an engram first. Sure. That's how you became a construct. Exactly. Now, Mikoshi's the place Soul Killer operates out of, where it stores its victims' engrams. So, me and Mikoshi, how are we linked at all? Still don't see how Mikoshi's linked to my chip problem. Not the brightest bulb on stage, <laughs> are you? Fifty years back, ops on the human mind. Mikoshi was the sole place on Earth where they did anything like that. Bet it still is today. Telling you, all roads lead there. It's where we'll settle our biz. You yours, me mine. Okay, how'd you plan to destroy Arasaka this time? And, uh, how you plan to smash Arasaka this time? Got another nuke tucked away? This time, bombs named Alt Cunningham. I'm supposed to know who that is? Not yet. But you will once we find what we need. Alright. Alright. For now, we got no time to lose. Need to get inside Makoshi. Okay, got a few other bits that we should do first, however. <laughs> also, why is it saying on our minimap that we're still in a hostile area? This is just like public space now, right? <laughs> um, let's call Judy. I would. Promise I called, didn't I? Promising's one thing, keeping it's a whole other bag. So, managed to learn anything? Got a lead. Evelyn's not at Clouds anymore. Behavioral chip was damaged. Apparently, they carted her off to a ripper dock, goes by fingers. Oh, shit. You know where to find him? Know where to find this fingers character? Yeah, runs a dinky chop shop off Jig Jig Street. Fuck V. Guys, all kinds of bad news. Why is that? I'm going there now. Heading there now to find her. I told her to stay the fuck away from clouds. Oh, all right, later V. Cool. Noticing we are a little low on health there. I'm sorry, sir. Could we have a moment of your time? Okay, how far away is this thing? Uh, oh, not far at all. Okay. Guess it makes sense they wouldn't have wanted to have to take her that far. What's up? Anything to say or you just you just chilling? Mumbai. Place has a wicked vibe. So this more up your alley than clouds. Hey, at least here you know what you're getting. Fair. What is this statue? Who is that? No idea. <laughs> Anything in these places or are we... We not really got a reason to go in there. Where's your cute little ass rushing off to? Okay. I should have guessed what the lip symbol meant, huh? <laughs> New release brain dances. I think we've read that one, right? Uh. Yeah. Yeah. What can you buy in the sex shop? What's this one do? Use your imagination. Why do you think I Amazing. Truly. So I wouldn't have to. Oh, that's incredible. I can see that. Yikes. You chosen something. What the Oh my goodness. How can I be upset? Oh, this is this is great. What have you got, man? 
Got anything that might interest me? <laughs> the Pylomancer 3000 Plumber Certified. <laughs> oh, for when you have that special itch, the Trans Anal Express. <laughs> First stop, Prostate Peak. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Gag. <laughs> Who needs safe ones? Oh no, that is, uh, that is bad. Is, is that a fist? That's a fist. Oh, oh no. Oh no. That's something that'll keep you hard. <laughs> oh Christ. Christ almighty, what is this? Just somewhere to jack into the net? Pleasures of Night City. Sure. Can I hack it at all? Just to distract enemies, but not to gain anything. I would really like to yeet some money out of them, but it doesn't look like that's an option. Hey. Hello. You wanted to. Oh! I didn't even realize where we were. Oh, wow! That's like. Huh! Looking for a ripper doc named Fingers. Now that is interesting. Like there's no I'm waiting. You wanted to say something? There's no quest to come in here at all. They just gave her extra dialogue. I didn't even realize that I'd been here before to speak to her. But that is actually really interesting that she has dialogue about the quest you are currently on. I'm looking for someone. Ripper Doc called Fingers. Oh, I do not recommend him. Slippery type, questionable methods, tech straight from the trash. But he is cheap. Need to talk to him. He has a clinic on Jig Jig Street. Works mainly with the local joy toys. Cool. That is oh, I am like that that shit impresses me, man. Stuff that like not that many people are gonna see, but they put it in anyway. That's some good shit. Surprising, impressive, and good shit. And I gotta work out. Give me something raw, untouched. Raw's all you get with me. I'll come back What's some other edge? time. Betting on it. You look pretty cool, dude. I like the look. How about? What the fuck just happened there? That was weird. Oh, I tried to crouch under here and I skipped his dialogue. What are you selling? What have you got? Virtues. Any special kind? Well, let me put it to you this way. Those who know, don't need to ask. Looking for a woman. See a woman here with blue hair? Young, total knockout. Yeah, my customers are mostly uglier. You know, usually of the old male pattern balding variety. <laughs> if I'd seen a young knockout chick, I'd remember her. Just like you do, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Fingers? Looking for a ripper doc. Goes by fingers. Heard of him? Fingers, fingers. Sets off a buzzer. Tell you that much. Know where I can find him. Not a clue in the world. Okay, well, you're fucking useless, aren't you? Especially because he's apparently literally, like, right down there. Anything in here? Relive it. Brain dance quarterly. Braindance editors have long strived to strike a balance between real lived experience and technological experiential purity. The more heavily processed the material, the more abstracted the pathways, the clearer the brain dance recording. These fundamental elements of design have guided editors since the first wave of brain-to-brain -brain experience sharing technology took hold. In their pursuit of balance, however, editors have clearly shown a bias for purity over naturalism over the years, even going so far as to use it as a point of pride in the quality of their production. But in the industry's latest push for greater purity, has the purpose of the technology already been forgotten? Will we not find ourselves processing and filtering a brain dance recording to the point that the emotional experience no longer extends beyond what we receive from film, television, and video games? After reliving some of the latest titles on my feeder unit, this once academic question now feels all too inevitable with the industry's current traje trajectory. For a moment, let's consider why some reports suggest more and more users are searching for unlicensed titles on the black market so-called black brain dances, extreme brain dances, or XBDs. Are we so sure it's the illicit content they're after? Or maybe the real draw is the residual grit we editors try so hard to remove. 
distracting thoughts, irrelevant memories, loose associative threads, emotions stretching beyond the desired spectrum? What if this noise is not so superfluous as we believe it to be? What if these peripheral, ex peripheral experiences are all <laughs> peripheral experiences hold the potential to elevate a good brain dance to an exquisite one? We do ourselves a disservice by not exploring these questions before our blind crusade for brain dance purity leads this industry straight into the bin of obsolete flash in the pan technology. Not gonna lie, I feel like at this point brain dances could not be just straight into the bin <laughs> flat and flash in the pan like it seems like it's a very very well embedded feature of this world like everyone uses brain dances it feels like so i really don't think they could call it obsolete flash in the pan technology that's that's the kind of sentence you reserve for like xbox connect <laughs> the fucking thing that was, was so important so vital that you could not buy an Xbox One at launch without Kinect. It came bundled in, you couldn't get it without it, and it increased the price by a hundred quid <laughs> and caused PS4 to just immediately take the lead last gen in sales. Like, because why would you spend an extra hundred quid on Kinect when it wasn't even particularly good in terms of tracking technology? And then like three games used it and then it was consigned to the bin by Microsoft themselves. That's the kind of thing, that's the kind of tech that we talk about there. I feel like Brain Dance is much more of a big deal. That was the quarterly magazine for Brain Dance editors, amateurs, and enthusiasts. Boy, am I glad that Kinect died out as well, because, like, do I really want to have video games that are, you have to, like, stand up and be, like, using all your arms and legs and everything. And I guess, like, you're kind of doing that in VR, but it's a lot less intensive. Like, you're going to be moving your arms a bit, but for the most part, you're just standing still and looking around. And you can play it with a controller. Whereas Kinect was, like, full body motion control, and it was just like, nah. <laughs> nah. I don't know about you guys. Let me know if you would have been interested in keeping Kinect around. But for me, big nah. Man, is this, is this the fucking legendary quick elevator day? Just fucking yeet right that. That's... Man, I, I, I'm half curious if this is like some update or something. Just because of how much faster it is. Wait, did I... That's where I came from, right? I walked down those stairs and it guided me to go down here, under there up the elevator to here. Why did it not just guide me around? Okay, whatever. Unless, unless I, maybe I just missed where it was guiding me, but I swear that's what it just did. <laughs> Looking at this person at this angle, uh, the way they're holding that weapon makes it look like something else. <laughs> Couple of bits hey, and bobs to read. One step closer. Here to see who. Give me one sec. Outer space, my life in orbit. What's life in space like? Comfortable. Of course, not everything's a bed of roses. Gravity below 1G isn't great for your bones or muscles. Synthesized food isn't to die for, and stuff from Earth is as rare as it is expensive. If you live in a private orbital, orbital station, congrats, you're richer than me, you always see the same faces. But if you live in a hybrid station like Crystal Palace... <laughs> sorry, what? They named the stations after places in the UK? <laughs> or maybe... I don't know. Uh, you'll, you'll have to live with the corporate... Corporate. Bachelor part parties every weekend. But don't let that put you off. There are more upsides than downsides to living in orbit. First of all, safety. To get into orbit, you'll need a lot of zeros in your bank account. Which means you won't see legions of homeless people, scared out gangsters, or aggressive joy toys. The exception to that being the lunar colonies. But no self-respecting orbital dweller would ever set foot there. In other words, you can walk outside at night unarmed without security and come back home in one piece, wallet undisturbed. Amazing, right? Secondly, quality of service. Anyone in the customer service sector had to rack up an enormous debt to come up here. Their only hope to pay it off within their lifetimes is to rake in a lot, and I mean a lot, of tips, which means they'll bend over backwards to satisfy every whim. 
if you're an employer, you don't have to worry that an, um, that an employee you just hired and trained at your expense will suddenly quit and go to work for the competition for a few extra eddies a week. Many stations, especially the private ones, simply don't have competition, and if they do, it's basically negligible. Agreements can be made so situations like that don't occur. Thirdly, and most importantly, no government can tell you what to do, where and how. Orbital stations are autonomous and governed by their own laws, and there aren't that many of them. If you can afford your own station, you're the undisputed lord and master of your little corner of space. You want to tie the help up to a whipping post when they make a mistake? Go right ahead. Want four, five wives or four husbands? I'm sure you'll have a line of willing volunteers. Yikes. Uh, who is Dr. Paradox? Who is Dr. Paradox? Who's hiding behind the distorted mask? Unsurprisingly, Doc Paradox won't say. After all, he's breaking the law. He has to protect his identity. If he revealed even the tiniest sliver about himself, Netwatch agents would be at his door in less than a minute. But think about it. Think. What kind of person could successfully hide from the world's most powerful corporations for years? Who could hack into encrypted TV channels? Who could disclose highly classified corporate secrets? The answer is obvious. Doc Paradox is one of them. He's a puppet controlled by the establishment. To what end? Maybe this is how corporations funnel our anger and frustration in a safe and controlled manner. Through a rebel who will never go so far as to issue a call to arms. Maybe he's being used to reveal facts that hurt the competition. Or maybe he's just a branding opportunity. In a month or two, Avante could put out a new Doc Paradox line for us to wear our disapproval. Only time will tell. But for Christ's sake, don't listen to a word out of this phony's mouth. Have we ever heard of Dr. Paradox before? I feel like that would be... I like, I, that was fun, a fun read, but I feel like it would be more fun if I had any background on who the fuck Dr. Paradox is. That's a great name. Right. Fingers MD. Let's have a chat, shall we? 